I want to just share with you really, really quick. If we're going to emphasize the Word of God, I want to remind you why we emphasize the Word of God. Timothy, Paul wrote these letters to Timothy in 2 Timothy. The young preacher man, the young one that had been saved and his mom and his grandmother uh, poured uh, the Word of God into his life. And now he was having to live it for himself. And he had a mentor, Paul, but yet Paul couldn't be with him all the time as well. As a matter of fact, in these letter, this particular letter, he, he really thought this was going to be his last letter, and it was his last letter. But he reminded Timothy, Timothy knew this, but he reminded him and he was reminding us of the power of the Word of God and the purpose of the Word of God. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, he says, all Scripture is given, and let me just put it in uh, a different couple ways of phrasing it. First, let me just say, all Scripture is given by God. God in heaven, sitting high upon the throne, in love and kindness, knew mankind needed a way to know Him, a way to bridge the gap, a way that the God in heaven could manifest himself to us. It is God's gift. I don't know about you, but I grew up with the Word of God. I grew up with a table in our living room that had a copy of the Word of God on it. I grew up with my parents giving me a Bible when I was very, very young, when I was learning to read. And I remember on the very front of it, those two words that were so powerful, Holy Bible. And I, be, I remember that going into a uh, Sunday school and RAs and other groups of, that we would meet together, and, and we would memorize Scripture together. And this was God's gift for us. When he's told young Timothy, he said, all Scripture, not just the particular parts of it that you like to read over and over again, but all Scripture is given by him. And if you want to put it in the pure phraseology of it, he says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That, that word literally means God breathed it. So God actually was speaking to us through his word. And he used the stories of man. He would take those men and so by the power of the Holy Spirit, so pour into them that they knew the words of God and they pinned those words down, told the stories of life, uh, of men and women in common, ordinary daily life, going through common uh, occurrences, things that you and I face, but how God would find them there and meet them there and help them there. And I think of Esther, a young girl in a crazy place, becomes queen. A difficult time. Someone has made the Jews their enemy and wants to totally eliminate all of them. But Mordecai came to Esther and, and encouraged her that she could be the instrument that God would use. That, that she could go and on, in her obedience, God could use her and the Jewish people could be taken care of. And he said these words to her. The place that she was put in and her understanding and her knowledge of God. He said, for such a time as this, in this crazy world that we live in, in the upside down world of 2020, for such a time as this, people need the Lord. People need to know about the Lord. And how will they hear unless someone tells them? How will they know what they should do? So, Paul told Timothy, all scripture is given by God, and it is for doctrine to tell us the things of God, for reproof so that we can be changed into those doctrines of God, for correction to help us with our sins, and the pursuit of righteousness to be able to know the right way to live. That is God's word. It helps us. Let me also share with you, I hope it's a verse that you never forget. I hope it's something that God will pour into your heart. It's an obscure verse, though it is in the Gospel of John. It's actually the words of, of Jesus. 
he was sharing with people in that, that circumstance, and he was telling them how, what they needed to know in that circumstance. But he shared a jewel uh, of a few words that I hope you hear, and I hope you take it to heart. And as you're facing the tragedies of your life and your day, the difficulties, I hope you remember these words. In John chapter 10, verse 35, Jesus said these words, Scripture cannot be broken. Scripture cannot be broken. The truths, the love, the power, the access to the throne. It is the gift of God for us. And if we would take it and believe it and claim it and make it our own, it is the pathway of life and the pathway of blessing. If we stand, as we sang this morning, on the promises of God, if we face those difficulties of life and say, this is God's will for me, then we can claim Jesus' words, Scripture cannot be broken. This week I met with a, a couple. They're going to be married next month. And I've been uh, counseling them. Everyone that I, I agreed to marry, I make them go through 10 counseling sessions with me. And I... I Make them talk about all the things that they don't talk about otherwise. You know, when they're dating, you talk about all the nice things, right? You talk about the, the things that you like to do and the things that you like in them and all that other kind of stuff. And, and everything's good. And, every, and I'm the one that comes in and says, hey, but what about this? What about this? And I make them talk about everything, the things that, that they don't talk about. Because what happens is, is that life happens. And, and difficulties will come up. And then you'll hear one of them say, well, I didn't know you thought that. I didn't know that's how you felt about that. And so I make them talk about all those things ahead of time. And this past week, uh, actually it was Friday, I I sat down with them and I was sharing with them. And I said, look, I I think it was like the fourth session that we've had together. And I said, remember what I told you the very first session that we met? I said, "The, the secret sauce of what it takes to make a marriage work. And I reminded them, I, I said, he, if, you, if you want the secret sauce that makes it work, it's the Word of God. It's a relationship with God. And all the things that we were talking about in there, I said, these are precepts, these are truths, these thing, are things that are help you, but you're not going to be able to do it on your own. I cannot tell you how many times I've had to, to counsel married couples who, when they made those vows, they, they meant it. And they believed it. And they, said, they thought that, that if with the love that they had in their heart, that everything would be good forevermore until death do they part. But then life happens and they, they don't find the strength and they don't know what to do. And I, I reminded them, listen, you're not going to be able to do it without a relationship with God. Everything flows from this relationship that we have with God. And as you find God, and as you uh, stand on those truths, that helps you have this relationship with others. That helps you have a relationship with that spouse. It helps you have a relationship with your children. It gives you the understanding of how you should live with that boss that doesn't know God. It helps you to understand how that you should deal with the things of life. I said, that's the special sauce, and you need to, to have a time with God. You need to let the Word of God become alive to your, in your life. A light, a lamp unto your feet, a light unto your path. You need to hide its words in your heart that you might sin against God. Also on Friday, my son, my own son came and we spent the day working down here at the church. And I took him to lunch and uh, we were eating lunch together, and we were talking, you know, he's been married now about 14 months, just a newlywed, you know, just, just starting out. I'm proud of him. Can't tell you how proud I am of my son and how he's trying to do the right thing. Every day, he prays for my daughter-in-law, and my daughter-in-law prays for him. They have a devotion that they go through every day. 
but he was asking me some questions. And I told him the very same thing. I said, son, never forget the secret sauce. Never forget the thing that makes it go is, is having a relationship with God that is real. Not just because dad believed it. Not just because the church. But let it become a part of you. Hide those words in your heart so that you will not sin against God. So you, you will know the truths. So that you can live those truths. So that you can not hesitate. So that you cannot be fearful. These are the precepts of life. They will tell you the yes of God. And they will tell you the no of God. They will give you direction in uh, the map of God. And I, I, I give this Bible to the seniors when they graduate school. And I always remind them that the Bible will keep them from sin. But sin will keep them from the Bible. And I, I tell them, I told my son, I said, son, let it be yours. Let it be real to you. God wants to speak to you. There is power in the Word of God. There's power in memorizing Scripture. There's power in being a group, being in a group of people that discuss the Word of God together. Becoming a disciple. Too many people pray a prayer so that they can accept God and think that that's the end when that's the beginning. We need to become followers of Christ, disciples of Christ. It's a lifelong blessing, the Word of God. Right now, in this room, you're thinking of a verse Maybe that your mom or your dad prayed over you or your Sunday school teacher taught you or you were going through a difficult time and you read the Bible and that verse became real to you. I can tell. You're thinking of the verse. And probably in this room, with all the different people in this room, it's probably Old Testament scriptures and New Testament scriptures. Some were probably the words of Jesus. Some may be the words of Habakkuk, some may be the words of the first five books that, that Moses wrote to us. But they're all God's words that become dear to you, that become life to you. Where would we be without the word of God? Psalms 10 says... Foundations are destroyed, what will the righteous do? If we do not stand on the foundation of the word of God, what will we do? I remember in the fifth grade, the man that came to school and gave me a red New Testament. How many of you keep one of these close to you? By your bed, by your favorite chair in your living room. Maybe one that you keep, maybe you've got, a, I should say it now, maybe you've got one on your phone. Maybe you've got a copy of the Word of God on, on your phone that you can uh, look up. I've got one, and by the way, it, the, the app that I use on my phone is free. If you, want, if you need it, you can study by it. You can read it. It has different translations. You can compare the translations. It won't cost you, an, uh, won't cost you one penny. Amen? Phyllis is showing me hers now. Amen? I can see the glow on your face from the Word of God as it's on your phone. Thank God for the Word of God. But what about those who don't have it? Broadus, did you say a dollar and 35 cents to invest a, a New Testament so that a fifth grader could get it, a college student could get it, so that you could go to a, the dentist office or a doctor's office and pick one up and read it? We've all seen them in the motel rooms. What about, let's take it in, to that seven and a half billion people in the world. By the way, you need to be praying 
we translators have done an absolutely wonderful job to put the word of God in the language of the people. But there are still languages out there where we're trying to get it to them. Where they can have a hear, read the word of God in their own language. Praise God for the people who are trying to make that happen. Trying to make it possible. The word of God. One of the worst testimonies of a Christian's life is a copy of the Word of God with dust on it. It's meant to be read. We are meant to be in groups of people where we can read it and discuss it and talk about it and let it become real in our life. Accountable to the Word of God. Let's pray. My Lord, you spoke from heaven. You made the way. Jesus, your word says that you are the way, the truth, and the life. John 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The living word, it is inspired, it is infallible, it is inerrant, and Lord, for me, It has been so very helpful. Father, may we never take it for granted. May we make a may we be devoted to you and devoted to the word that brings us to you. And we that are so blessed, may we share it with those who need you. Help us to put the money into the hands of people who will take the word of God all around the world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.